Good Lord, I think a fungal spore just went up my nose. Greetings, my fellow dwellers of the third rock from the sun. How are we all doing today? I hope you guys are safe and well. And today we have a Cartier or Cartier tank on our bench. The Cartier tank was designed in 1917 by Louis Cartier, the grandson of the original founder of the company. France entered World War I in 1914, so every time Louis looked out of his workshop window in Paris for inspiration, all he would have seen would have been the dogs of war, soldiers, guns, military gear and machinery. Well, this miserable view all around him didn't stop him from creating one of the most iconic dress watches of all time. The landscape around Louis would have been filled with military vehicles and so his inspiration came from his nation's military pride in the form of the Renault FT-17 military tank, which itself was one of the most revolutionary tank designs in history. Now do you see the resemblance? Cubism in art was also flavour of the month during this period from the likes of Picasso and Braque, which may have also influenced Louis' design. Since its invention in 1917, the Cartier tank's timeless design has endured in various guises and is still a popular model to this day. This particular piece is from the 80s with a 17 joule manual wind movement and looks like it was unearthed from the rubbles of war, i.e. a divorce settlement box left in a damp cellar. It is a sterling silver base with an 18 karat gold plating. <laughs> the watch is not currently functioning and the plating on the case has worn out severely in some areas. Oh, wow. The dial, however, has aged in a very pleasing way with this spiderweb mosaic crazing. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, I don't know the words. Now this was the larger case size at a whopping 23 millimeters across, so would have been worn by men and even women, although there is a smaller size for women. It's tiny. What? Now, as you can see, uh, this is a tiny movement. It's a Cartier 78 1 17 joule manual wind movement, which is an ETA base 2512. It's a very simple movement with just an hour and minute hand. The movement is very dirty and there is a screw missing on the train bridge. And here you can see that missing screw.
So as you can see, the plating has kind of worn off here. So the idea is to not remove all the gold, but just to blend it all in so that it's level. Just blend it all into the silver and then we can replate it. That's the plan. So first, let's just get it all cleaned up. So after the wash, the gold plating is quite badly worn in some areas. So some of you guys have been asking me about the solutions I use for cleaning. So for my case and bracelet cleaning, I use this water-based ammoniated solution. One tank with the solution and two rinse tanks with just clean water. I then use these two non-water-based solutions for cleaning the movements in my Elmer RM90. One jar with the cleaning solution and two with rinse aid. Dark so you can see how we blended all that in and my little helper is here with me who helped me out today for polishing and there you go okay. we've got most of the scratches out but you can see a few big dents here and I'm going to leave them in because if we try and take these out then you'll end up ruining all this text and hallmarks and stamps so sometimes you just have to know when to stop 
rolling these and he does these were kites. Okay. solution gold so I have this titanium cage and I have this anode bag for my nickel anodes mask 6 volts right so some of you will remember the nickel plating video I did a while back and so I won't go through the whole process here as it's very similar I first clean the part in an electro cleaning solution which has violently reacted with the silver and I have always had decent gold plating result in the past without adding this electro cleaning step to my regime but the only reason I have been using it is because my supplier recommended it however I think I'll remove this process from my regime going forward the reaction to the silver easily wipes off I then nickel activate the case just in case nickel was used in the factory silver does tarnish very easily so even if there is gold plating on top of it the tarnish on the silver will eventually show through the thin layer of gold plating so it's always a good idea to put a layer of nickel on first. So after nickel activating the case, I then nickel plate the case and give the plating a quick buff to make the shine even. And then I nickel activate it again and then finish off with a layer of gold plating. Three for the bridge. Uh, the seahorse, the dolphin, and we have a squid. So, for that missing screw, I have a similar movement. This is a golden one. Ooh, golden. Let's see if I can find the screw. And we have a screw. Using a size four today.
my hands are shaking Oh, my hands are shaking today Because my blood sugar is so low My wife hasn't fed me Cause she's got the hump For some reason unbeknown to me oh. So at least the dolphin's in <laughs> should eat something before I attempt to oil the capsule otherwise I might just bugger it up would you use an old oil lamp? oh I didn't record it yeah we'll record from this side then have you done? It's over here. I have a lost it. Don't you worry. That's my belly grumbling. Uh, she's got the hump for some reason. And my hands are shaking. Somebody please feed me. There is no way I can do this under the camera. So I'll give it a try. Hold on, let me see if I can get this in. Hard enough as it is, but now your head is in the way. <laughs> your head is quite a big head. Oh. Hold on. Oh no, it's gone. I'm nearly done here folks, so I hope you've enjoyed the restoration of this iconic piece from one of the most famous jewellery brands in the world. If you have enjoyed this restoration, then please subscribe to the channel. I can't believe I'm nearly at 100,000 subscribers and it's been made possible by you people with big hearts and open minds. So thank you for watching, thank you for all your support. Thank you for all the wonderful comments you leave. Even though I can't respond to all of them, you still comment nevertheless. Now that's love. So look after yourselves and look after one another. Peace, love and blessings to you all. And if the Almighty wills, I'll see you on the next one. Tara a bit.